you know, Santa Gabriel. Yeah. Last time I played it, perhaps eight or ten years ago. As I got older, things got a little bit more and more difficult. And then it came the announcement for those people who have an instrument that they don't really use it anymore. How long can you live with memories? WQXR, which is running the instrument drive. It's very simple. You have an old instrument sitting around, drop it off. The instruments will be distributed to schools in New York City. And it seems like every instrument has a story behind it. My name is Kathy Dean. My name is Hedy Stempler. And I'm donating a clarinet. Has been in our family for 50 years. I'm donating Roland EM15 keyboard. My name is Joseph Feingold. I donated a violin which I bought in a displaced person's camp back in 1947. After the war and all the horrible experiences, what, you, you really, you just wanted a violin? I mean, there was probably so much you needed. So what drove you to, to use your cigarettes for a violin instead of a winter coat or food or... I was born in Warsaw on March 23rd, 1923. I had a violin as a kid. I delighted in learning about the strings, the tonality. Everything at that time, as far as my mother is concerned, revolved around music. My mother had a good voice. And very often, I accompanied her on the violin. Music meant so much to us. And I played the violin until the beginning of the war. The Germans came September 1st, 1939. The Gestapo were going to arrest my father. My parents decided my father and I had to escape to eastern Poland, which was taken over by the Russians. I left my mother and two brothers. I left the violin behind. Within days, the Russian Secret Service came, picked up all the kids, packed them into train, freight trains, and sent them to Siberia. And I was one of them. I was 17. We came up with the number of 1,000, the instruments we thought we would receive. In the end, we got 3,000 instruments, 500 on the very first day. Trumpets, French horns, violins. This is, this is Joseph's instrument here. We're in the process now of placing these instruments in schools with our matching partner, the Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation. The mission is to put instruments into schools. So we're like a conduit, you know, we're the middleman. When I first heard about Joseph's violin donation, it did put a sense of responsibility of we have to find a home for this where this violin can continue having its voice. In the poorest congressional district in the nation is Bronx Global Learning Institute for Girls. We accept girls on a lottery basis they're from new immigrant families, South America, the Caribbean, Africa. Every single student in the school learns how to play the violin from kindergarten, day one. 
One, two, ready, and. You know, there's a report card, there's homework. The violin program here is treated as any other subject area. One of the things that, that led me to knowing that this school was a perfect fit for Joseph's violin is that the principal referred to the girls that she serves at the school as survivors. They come from all different backgrounds, but each one of them has her story. We have very exciting news to share with you all today. Today we are receiving a very special violin. There's a man named Joseph, and Joseph is a Holocaust survivor. His hope is that it'll bring a similar happiness and comfort to a young life. And we are choosing one student to play on it, during their time here at Big League. And the student that we have chosen, she really shows a unique ability to show her emotion through her violin. So we are so excited to announce that the student that we have chosen is Brianna. My name is Brianna Perez. I'm 12 years old, about to be 13 in a month, and I'm currently in the seventh grade. I've known her since she was in first grade, and it's just been amazing to see her grow up into a young lady. I had a huge obsession when I was younger with Tinkerbell, and I kind of still do. She's like an independent, hardworking fairy, and um, she was chosen for something special. And I was chosen for something special, too. When she's playing the violin, she, she transforms herself totally. It's like she's going inside the music. Family is everything. I live with my mom. My father, he lives, like, across I guess. I didn't notice that she took my husband and my break so hard. Until one day that I saw her crying and she started playing the violin. And she told me that I believe it's my fault. And I said, no, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Everyone has those days where it's like dark for them, but most people find their light. And my light is playing the violin. Brianna has been presented with some challenges that here in the school, everyone has really assisted her to overcome. It's such a joy to teach you every single day here at school. You display, uh, you display a passion for music that is very rare. We know, Brianna, that you will cherish this violin and enjoy playing on it just as Joseph did. Oh, sweetie, I'm so proud of you. So happy for you. Joseph's going to be very excited. Joseph is going to be very excited. You should have a bike. Yeah, He's you should. Yeah, he always wants We're to be a survivor come. of the holiday. We're hoping he can come. That would be really special. So I found myself in Siberia, in a labor camp. Life was very tough. Temperature kept dropping, it was colder and colder. They allowed us to write a letter once a month. So I sent the letter to my mother. 
and I received a reply. My mother wrote out the lyrics of Solveig song, which was very appropriate to her, a mother who was missing her son. I, I sang it. Yeah, I still remember it very well. how we were chosen out of everyone. It looks like a violin, but it's way more. It's way, way more, more, more than that. history. Inside, there's so many secrets, and that violin has so many secrets that nobody knows. Now I can hide our secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot forget my brother telling us only once in our life about the day when they took my mother and youngest brother in a train. That's the only time when he told me with details which I don't care to repeat. My brother and I went to the flea market. We came across the violin. So we got the violin for, for Cardinal Sagres. I walked the streets and I played the violin. It reminded me of my young years before the war. That was when I finally lived as normal as it could be. I arrived to the United States in 1948. In 62, I became an architect. I met Regina in 1970. She knew my attachment to the violin, so the first gift I got from her was a music stand. Dear Mr. Feingold, thank you very much for donating your special 
violin. The first time I played on your violin, I loved the immense and gorgeous sharp sound. Was also speechless when Miss Coco called my name. Music was made a huge impact on my life. I would love to invite you to PGLID so I can meet you. I am thankful every day that I have the opportunity to play a new beautiful violin. Every single day. This is my classroom. That's where we're gonna go in? Yes. You ready? Sure. Is this is Brianna? This is Brianna. Hello. Say hi. Hello. Oh. Could you think of Oh boy. You are beautiful. Thank you. Oh. I'm very, very happy. That's nice. Thank you. You're devoted to violin. Yes, I am. Oh, boy. Thank you so much. I'm really <laughs> I was surprised that you, you find the violin so nice and sound. It's beautiful. I thought it's a violin. <laughs> it sounds Not more than yet. a violin. That's terrific. Thank you. Do you think I'll be able to hear? Of course. Something? I do have something prepared for you. Oh, good. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> How did you select this Greek piece? Well, I, my teachers told me it was a piece that your mom gave you. She sent oh, yeah. me a letter. Oh, she sang this. She knew the words to it, too. Oh, yeah. That's terrific. And it's very that special you, to that me. That you have too. it. Oh, yeah. I never, I never, never expected anything that's going to happen. Why not? And to me, it was a very simple thing. I don't use it. Let someone else enjoy it. I didn't know it's to go to anyone like you. Music has connected every single person here today. Thank you for sharing your story and for allowing 
every student here at Big League to continue on your journey. Sometimes I wonder, do I really deserve it? What did I do? <laughs> you never gave up. That's what you did. Yeah. You had hope. <laughs> I'm in love with her. Good afternoon. It's a privilege because I get to have history in my hands. And I've, to me, this is like an adventure. I always wanted an adventure. <laughs>